It is one thing to study war and another to live the warrior's life. This is a quote from a favored fictional character, character of mine, Telamon of Arcadia, the solitary mercenary of the ancient world. People ask me sometimes, uh, well, Telamon is the only recurring character in, in books that I've written. He's in, he appears in, in this book, The Virtues of War, about Alexander the Great. And then he appears again in, in Tides of War. Actually, he came before the other Virtues of War. And he appears in this book, the, A Man at Arms, which is coming up in, in March. And um, I wanted to say that so far in this series, you know, we've talked about the Spartans. We've talked about the concept of, of the supreme collective example of the warrior archetype in the most honorable setting, the Battle of Thermopylae. We've also talked about Alexander the Great and how the idea of, uh, you know, there's a supreme individual example, exemplar of the warrior archetype and how in the realm of conquest, the warrior archetype gets it into a dark side and into ethical and moral issues. And we've talked about the citizen soldier, the concept that came from ancient Greece and was expressed in our own greatest generation of the, the individual teacher, farmer, factory person who goes off to war and then returns you know, to serve his country and returns to his life the way he originally lived it. And we've talked about the idea in the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna of the idea of the inner war, that the supreme warrior Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita is instructed to use his warrior skills fighting the inner war, the vices and the sins that we are all privy to as, as human beings. And now, and we also talked about the idea, the concept of archetypes through this whole series, the idea that the warrior archetype is only one archetype in a progression as we mature, and that beyond the warrior archetype are the father, the mentor, the teacher, the king, the sage, the magician. With the character of Telamon, I want to get into a whole other thing that pulls it into the modern era, and I think pulls it closer to you and to me. Telamon is the individual soldier. The soldier who's cut free, the warrior who's cut free from any great concepts of glory or conquest or uh, enacting some noble enterprise and must answer the question of how do I live my life? What is honorable? What is noble? What is good? Without any guidance coming from any higher sources. And I want to read you just a couple of short passages here to give you a sense of this character. We're going to talk about him over the next two or three episodes. This comes from... The Virtues of War, in which Telamon is a tutor of Alexander. And this is a passage, this is Alexander speaking. When I was a boy, I had two tutors. Aristotle taught me to reason. Telamon taught me to act. He was 33, I was seven. No one appointed Telamon over me. Rather, I fell in love with him and refused to be driven from his side. He seemed to me then, and does to this day, the perfect incarnation of the soldier. I used to trek the drill field in his train, aping his gait. The men pissed themselves laughing, but I intended no disrespect. I wished only to walk like him, stand like him, ride like him. Telamon was a sergeant then. He is a general now. Still, I cannot bring him in from the field to the staff tent. He will not come. His idea of a good breakfast is a night march, and of a good dinner, a light breakfast. So Telamon is, to me, the kind of the, the man with no name, the archetypal soldier, the soldier that appears in all eras. He is a philosopher beyond being simply a warrior. And I'll give you a, a sense of this within the warrior archetype. This is Alexander again talking about Telamon. I remember looking on as a lad of 11 when Telamon, serving then under my father, formed up his company for the first march out against the Tribalians. He ordered each trooper to unshoulder his pack and set it upright at his feet. Telamon then proceeded down the line, rifling each kit, discarding every item of excess. When he was done, the men had, beside their weapons, nothing left but a clay cup, an iron spit, and a cloak and blanket. There are further items, Telamon taught, that have no place in the soldier's kit. Hope is one. Thought for future or past, fear, 
remorse, hesitation. So Telamon to me is the, the soldier who has seen it all, who has fought for good commanders and bad commanders, who has believed in flags and has found that flags mean nothing in the end. He's someone who has committed crimes while he was in action and who has acted honorably while he's in action. And yet he has not disavowed the warrior archetype and the, and the profession of arms. He remains seeking within the warrior archetype to find a way to live his life and to live his life honorably. And so I think he is many ways you and me in our lives today. And that's why I want to get into him more and more over the next couple of episodes. But here's the other interesting thing to me as a writer about Telamon is this character, I never planned this character. It wasn't like I sat down and had an outline. I said, oh, here comes Telamon. He's going to do this and this. He just kind of appeared on the page and he appeared on the page kind of fully formed. And I didn't know what he was going to say. I didn't know where he was going to go. And, and then he appeared in a second book and in a third book and in a fourth book. And so when something like that happens as a writer, you have to say to yourself, this is coming from someplace deep. This, this character embodies something that's important to me and to my own understanding of myself and of how I, I want to live my life. So this is Telamon of Arcadia who said, it is one thing to study war and another to live the warrior's life. And we're going to get into that more and more in the next few episodes. Mm -hmm.